Millions of Americans are probably going to be at risk, and it may be just the time for all of us to just go ahead and get ready, as experts predict that it's happening in 2024. You see, the health crisis has shown us what is possible when it comes to shortages, whether it be food, medicine, even toilet paper, right? So this next shortage that we may face may rely heavily on a country that doesn't even like us very much, and that is China. And it could also drive people to suddenly rush and get supplies from Walgreens, CVS, Rite Aid, or any other local pharmacies that are close to them. Why? Because experts are predicting that the drug supply shortage that we have right now will only get worse as tensions grow even worse between the U.S. and China. More doctors and lawmakers are sounding the alarm about drug shortages in the U.S., among them life-saving cancer medications, including chemo drugs. These shortages can be life or death for kids, especially when it comes to the cancer drugs. The FDA's drug shortage lists include those that treat lymphoma and leukemia, we know how to treat cancer, but shortages force impossible choices. We have drugs that are life-saving and shortages that are life-threatening. Testifying at a Senate hearing, experts blame the shortages in part on the low cost of generic drugs, with insurance companies often only paying for those cheaper generic versions. A vial of sterile injectable medicine typically costs less than this cup of coffee that I bought downstairs this morning. So this reduces the incentive of manufacturers to invest in quality or in newer manufacturing facilities. It's not just cancer drugs. Kimberly Yard's daughter has taken the stimulant Vyvanse for her ADHD for years. But her insurance company wants her to switch to Adderall, another drug in short supply. Adderall's the one that started this whole shortage. So you want me to potentially not have consistent medication for my daughter? instead really why well any thoughts guys and before we dive any deeper into this thing and believe me when i tell you that it's going to be a heck of a rabbit hole i want to go ahead and ask you guys something are you concerned at all about these shortages just go ahead and comment yes or no down below and while you're at it hit the like button for the video and subscribe to the channel appreciate it guys it's not just cancer and adhd medication that's in short supply in fact 99 percent of pharmacists that were surveyed and asked that worked in hospitals confirmed that they're seeing shortages in their neck of the woods now at the end of 2023 124 medications were reported to be in short supply. And this raises a very important question. Why aren't we manufacturing them here at home? Well, supposedly we're getting at least 90% of our generic drugs from both China and India. This is actually something that Senator Rick Scott raised in mid 2023 this year. Look, you, listen to what they're saying. They say, and they're going to invade Taiwan. That's what they're saying. They've, they've said that their systems get prepared for war. So I think what we have to do is put ourselves in a position, don't be dependent on China for anything our drugs, anything at all, we should not be dependent on them. Every American is part of this. Uh, we, we don't have to buy Chinese products. And to the extent we're buying them now, how do we get those products made in America or in another ally? So we've got to, we've got to wake up and understand they have, they're preparing for war against us. It's not what we're doing. And so you do it every day. You don't do business with your enemy. They've decided, they have decided, we didn't decide this, they've decided to be our enemy. This was last year, and what are we talking about now? A possible conflict with China where sanctions could be placed in both ways. And in line with that, we're also seeing cyber attacks and ransomware just go ballistic toward the end of 2023. I mean, it was happening every single day from my perspective, either that or we're at least being discovered one after the other. I think one of the most recent ones happened with Yakult, that probiotic drink. I'm probably mispronouncing it, but anyway. Well, they were supposedly hacked and they had around 95 gigs worth of data compromised. Now, you might be thinking that there's not much to see there, but when you consider the fact that employees for their company, they're now compromised when it comes to their passports, their driver's license, their addresses, salaries, even more. And when you think about that, it grows a little bit more concerning, right? Probiotic company Yakult Australia is the latest victim of a cyber attack. The company's records and sensitive employee documents dating back to 2001 have been leaked and published on the dark web. Both the company's Australian and New Zealand IT systems were subject to the incident, which saw 95 gigabytes of data stolen. It is believed the theft was a ransomware attack, a cybercrime where hackers attempt to extort money from a company. Which now leads me to talk about electric vehicles. Why? Well, why not? 
No, but seriously, just like our devices, like laptops, computers, phones, and tablets, EVs also need software updates. That's one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan of them. The reasoning behind this is that it's supposed to protect your car from cyber attacks. And yes, the reasoning is sound, right? But what happens when an update fails? I mean, you've probably experienced it once or twice in your life, right? You mistakenly turn off your phone or update your laptop without plugging into the power source and errors can obviously happen. Now, I've seen this image make its way through the internet and well, it's kind of hard to believe. And just to go ahead and clarify, it says that the update was not successful and because of it, your vehicle cannot be driven. I repeat, the software update bricked the car. But I went ahead and researched it and they're saying that the car is now fixed. But I mean, like, does this really make you feel more secure about driving an EV? A software update could potentially stop you from being able to start your car or drive it or anything at all. And if such an error could be created by bad actors, then, well, then it would be theoretically easy for hackers to just kind of halt millions of cars on the road. Have you guys seen that movie, Leave the World Behind? Remember those Teslas getting all smashed up one after another, creating a massive pileup of hundreds of wrecked Teslas? Oh yeah. Now I want to go ahead and come full circle with our stories today and mix the pot just a little bit. So we talked about drug shortages in pharmacies and hospitals, as well as cyber and ransomware attacks that are hitting the critical infrastructure here in our country, which probably includes both our power and our water systems. But something that's raising a lot of concerns right now is the possibility that some hackers are targeting hospital systems as well. I mean, that's just crazy, right? I think there was one in late 2022 that was so bad that the hackers had to apologize for one of their affiliates attacking a kid's hospital. So the ransomware impacted internal and corporate systems, hospital phone lines, even their website. Now, if you've ever been in a hospital, you know that communications and time are very crucial. And there's a lot of things that could possibly go wrong if things don't function efficiently, things that could end up fatal for patients. One of the nation's largest healthcare providers is under siege, a major cyber attack forcing hospital ERs to turn away patients in multiple states. As Miguel Almaguer reports, it's just the latest high-profile company to get hit by hackers. Tonight, the ongoing cyber attack at Arden Health Services is forcing roughly a dozen of their hospitals to divert patients away from emergency rooms, impacting critical care in at least four states. Ardent, a major national health care provider, has now taken its network offline after cyber criminals hijacked their operating systems. How dangerous can a hack be at a hospital? Very. It's life-threatening. It's as uh, simple as that. This does put people's lives at risk. Still scrambling to restore its vital IT operations after the Thanksgiving Day hack, Ardent Health confirms a temporary disruption of operations, adding patient care continues to be delivered safely and effectively, though they cannot confirm the extent of any patient health or financial data that has been compromised. Now it's sort of like I'm back on the waiting wagon and that's not good. In Tulsa, Annie and Eric Wolf say her long scheduled open heart surgery has been delayed after doctors lost access to her medical records. And this is why I'm getting you guys informed about all this stuff. This is why I'm here every single day because it's vital that Americans know about what's happening all around them. Now, if you happen to be on any kind of medication and you can get supplies in advance, that might be a good idea. So long as you stay updated and keep your wits about you, these problems won't be as bad as how others are going to face it. But what are your thoughts on this, guys? Make sure you guys let me know down below. And before I go, I want to thank you guys for liking and subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys hanging out and I'll see you on the next video.